Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Today I want to discuss with you genital and perineal obstetric trauma. So, before we start, I want to focus on the anatomy of the perineum and the external genitalia. Please look to the picture in the lower right corner. This is the external genitalia. This is the mons veneris. This is the glands of the clitoris. This is the prepuce of the clitoris. This is the labia majora, both sides. This is the labia minora. And this is the urethral opening, external urethral meatus. This is the vaginal opening. Okay, this is the perineum. This is the perineum, and this is the external anal sphincter. Okay, lock to the upper right corner with this picture. This is the muscles in the perineum and around the vaginal opening. This is the bulbocavernosus muscle, and this is the uh, superficial transverse brinei muscle and this is the external anal sphincter okay so when tear happen here we'll cut the bulb the bulb cavernosus muscle and the transverse brinei muscle Okay, okay. And the, if the injury extends down to the anal sphincter, will injure this muscle of the external anal sphincter. So it is important to know the anatomy to understand the different types of trauma. We want to discuss today the classification, the surgical strategy, management of grazes and labial tears management of first degree tear management of second degree tear third and fourth degree tears which is very important complications so about the classification we can say there is different degrees of trauma grazes labial trauma first perineal tear, second, third, and the fourth perineal tears. What about the grazes? It's just the superficial abrasion of the vaginal wall or labia or perineal skin usually doesn't need any suture. Labial tear may be very superficial also or sometimes it may need approximation by suture. First degree perineal tear include the vagina and the perineal skin. Second degree perineal tear include the vagina and fascia and the skin of the perineum and muscle of the perineum but not reaching the anal sphincter. Third and fourth degree reaching the anal sphincter. Third reach the anal sphincter and they can be divided into 3a 3b and 3c if external anal sphincter injury is less than 50 percent so it is a if more than 50 percent it is b if it is including the internal sphincter together with the external sphincter it is called 3c so third degree is three types a b c what about the fourth degree perineal tear fourth degree perineal tear is like the third one but including also the anal epithelium and rectum maybe so not just the sphincter injured but also the anal wall okay okay let us see these pictures with variable trauma, obstetric trauma, and lacerations of the perineum 
vagina very recent and so on let us see the first one here is the cervical tear here is the retractors of the vagina and here is the external resermiatus and this is the surface and this is the tear and we can suture the tear using vacuole zero or tube zero continuous suture okay okay this is the raises or superficial laceration of the vaginal wall if very superficial like that may not need any suture this picture show labial tear can you see this area this is the labial tear if it is superficial also may not need any suture if it is more deep or the two ends is not close to each other we can approximate by suture either interrupted suture or continuous suture using vacuole 2-0 or 3-0 what about this picture this picture of periurethral tear as you see this is the tear we put the caster here to guide us not to injure the urethra and we can suture using 2 or 3-0 vacuole suture continuous or interrupted one on the other side of the picture this is uh, four degrees of perineal tear this is the first degree here the injury of the vaginal wall posterior vaginal wall and perineum skin of the perineum only so just vaginal wall and perineal skin this is the first degree then the second degree there is injury of the vaginal wall perineal skin and the perineal muscles as you see the bulbo the bulbo cavernosus muscle and sub superficial perineal transverse perineal muscle both of them injured here this is the perineal muscles but not reaching the external anal sphincter so second degree not reaching the external anal sphincter uh, while the the third degree here in this picture the same as second but reaching the external sphincter and we said we have three types a b c according 50 percent less than 50 percent of the anal sphincter injured so it is a more than 50 percent it is b if including the internal sphincter it is called c last picture here is the fourth degree perineal tear which similar to third but with injury also to the anal canal or rectum okay so this is the different types of genital and obstetric trauma as you see in the picture okay so what is the surgical strategy if we facing obstetric trauma identification of additional birth injuries and the exact classification as we saw in the pictures of the perineal tear by means of speculum inspection and digital rectal examination so you should define very well the types of tears present perineal or labial or vaginal tears or cervical tears or periurethral tears if necessary first management of cervical and the high vaginal tears so we will start from top down and then management of the perineal tear and it is very logic then documentation of the birth injuries and the surgical report is very important and they keep it in the file of, uh, of the patient and electronic also record so as you see in this picture this is cervical tear and this is the four degrees of perineal tear first second third and the fourth what about management of grazes and labial tears currently grazes and labial tears are assessed on an individual basis 
if there is no pleading and the skin edges are well opposed, there is no need to suture. For labial tear, suture of pleading or if loose skin flaps present, infiltrate skin edges with 1% lidocaine and join the skin edges using Vacryl R20. A continuous stitch is often most appropriate. Bilateral labial tears will need to be sutured to avoid skin healing together. So you, you want to avoid diffusion of post labia if you leave the bare area like that. So it is better if it is bilateral to suture it. This is an example in this picture of labial tear. What about management of periurethral tears? As you see in the picture, this is the periurethral area with the tear here and this is the suturing of the tear for periurethral tears anywhere near the urethra you should castorize the patient and localize the urethra in order to prevent suturing through the urethra and remove castor after repair and to be sure that there is no injury to the urethra absorbable interrupted to zero or three zero suture Vacryl R is used for the closure of the tear. Let us go to the perineal tears. We said for, uh, four degrees, first, second, third, and the fourth. And we said which one reach the anal sphincter is the third and the fourth one. And this is the most dangerous types. As we said before, here vaginal skin and the perineal skin only here vaginal wall and perineal skin and subcutaneous fascia and perineal muscles here vaginal skin perineal skin and subcutaneous fat and fascia and the perineal muscles and anal sphincter here vaginal wall perineal skin and subcutaneous tissue and uh, uh, perineal muscles and anal sphincter and anal wall. What about management of first degree tear? As we see in the picture, this is a first degree tear. Involve the perineal skin and uh, vaginal mucosa, but not the underlying fascia and the muscles. Swap the perineal muscles, sock in clean tap water and apply antiseptic solution suture using Vacryl R20 to be considered and assessed on an individual basis so if it is superficial and the uh, it can close spontaneously you can leave it if you found it uh, deep and they need suture you you are uh, the, the judging one so you can take sutures interrupted or continuous suture. Management of second degree tear, swap the perineum with gold, soak the in clean tap water and apply antiseptic solution. All second degree tear and the episiotomies are to be sutured. Okay? So never to leave a second degree tear, you should suture it. Infiltrate perineal tear with 1% lidocaine, 20 ml. Take care to infiltrate symmetrically to prevent distortion of the wound and subsequent repair. And this picture shows the second de degree perineal tear, and this picture shows the repair of the tear. We start above the apex of the tear in the vagina. So, what is needed to complete second degree perineal tear? I need a sterile suture and delivery pack, suture instrument set, 20 ml syringe, green needle, red needle, obstetric cream, clean tap water, lidocaine 1%, sterile gloves, and the vacuum R0 and 2-0, one to two packets, like the episiotomy repair. Second degree perineal tear is simulating the repair of episiotomy. Swap the perineum, Clean the perineum with gold soaked with clean tap water and apply antiseptic solution. Then a continuous non-locking suture technique used to oppose 
each layer but interrupted may be used if clinical judgment requires. Tie off separately any bleeding points with loop of suture. Identify the apex of the tear. Insert first suture above apex of tear and the tie a note. Avoid placing first stitch too deep. Remember the close proximity of the rectum. So we will start above the apex here by the first stitch and the suture and have a knot and don't go deep because you may injure the rectum. Then continue by continuous non-locking suture. Close posterior vaginal wall using continuous non-locking suture by Vicryl R20 on tape cut needle. Continue suturing until enteritis is reached using the hymenal remnants as a landmark. Bring the needle through the tissue underneath the hymenal ring into the muscle layer. Define the depth of the wound. Close the perineal body, the muscles of the perineal body, as we said before, bulbo cavernosus and transverse perineal muscle with continuous non-locking suture. Close the perineal skin using continuous subcuticular or interrupted transcutaneous. A continuous non-locking suture is associated with less short-term bear compared to the traditional interrupted missile. Check the vagina, ensure it admits two finger, so not to close the enteritis too much. Perform rectal examination to check for any sutures that may have penetrated the rectal mucosa. Give analgesics like Voltaren 100 mg per rectum if there is no contraindication and clean the perineum and apply antiseptic solution and place a trial bed in situ. Let us go to the third and fourth degree tears. As you see in the picture, this is the third degree tear and this is the fourth degree tear. Anal incontinence affect 11% of adults. The commonest cause in healthy patients is unrecognized damage to the anal sphincter during childbirth. The incidence of such tear, third and fourth degree tears, in primary gravity about 1.8% and in multiporous women 0.9%. When a third and fourth degree tear occurs, 54 up to 88% of the patients have persistent structural sphincteral defect despite the primary repair after the delivery. So, take care about that and we should do all preventive measures to avoid third and fourth degree tears. So the question is, what is the preventive measures? How to prevent obstetric anal sphincter injury? Consider an episiotomy if imminent severe tearing is suspected. Use episcissor 60 when possible and use the mediolateral episiotomy. This is much better than midline because midline may be associated with extension to the anal sphincter. So mediolateral episiotomy as this in the picture using the episcissor, this is the episcissor with 60 degree angle and this is the guide directed toward the anal the uh, external uh, anal uh, orifice this is a guide and this is a scissor we cut here the risk factors for anal sphincter injury are macrosomia baby weight more than four kilogram resistant to acceptable steroid position induction of labor primary gravida, epidural analgesia, force of the delivery, prolonged second stage of labor, and the midline episiotomy. So we should know the risk factor very well, and we should consider episiotomy when indicated using episcissor and the mediolateral episiotomy.
is much better than midline, of course. Repair of third and fourth degree tiers. Principle of the repair of one tier has been identified as involving the anal sphincter referred to an obstetric registrar or consultant. Of course, this condition needs an experienced said obstetrician. So, usually you refer to consultant such cases. Inform patient and her, her partner. Inform anesthetist who will need to perform anesthetic assessment. Ensure adequate anesthesia, either general or regional anesthesia. Of course, epidural or general anesthesia is used, but not local infiltration because I need the patient to be relaxed. The muscle should be relaxed during repair of the external sphincter. So, general or epidural anesthesia. All repair must be performed in the opening, uh, the operating theater where there is access to good lighting, appropriate equipment, and the aseptic conditions. Use the third degree repair bag which has been specially prepared for this purpose. Evaluate full extent of the injury by careful vaginal and rectal examination and lysotomy under anesthesia. Repair torn rectal mucosa with interrupted to zero vacuole suture with the nodes tied in the anal lumen. Identify and repair the internal anal sphincter separately from the external anal sphincter. Perform an end-to-end -end repair with interrupted or mattress 3-0 BDS suture, which is monofilament to decrease infection. So like this picture, end-to-end -end anastomosis, this is after anastomosis, end-to-end -end anastomosis, and use 3-0 BDS suture. Reconstitute external anal sphincter after careful identification using either end-to-end -end or, or overlap missile with interrupted 3-0 BDS suture. So, external anal sphincter, I can do either end-to-end -end suture or overlap suture. Like this picture, this is the end-to-end -end and this is the overlap one. This is the end-to-end. And this is the overlap one. Of course, in partial tear, in partial tear of the external anal sphincter, end to end is the must, and should be done, not the overlap because this is this is only partial tear, so end to end only. But if complete anal external anal sphincter injury, so either use end to end or overlap. The some advantage of the overlap in the early months after repair is to keep the continence of the external anal sphincter more than end to end. But on long run, after three years, there is no difference between end to end and the overlap missiles. Of course, we will use monofilament like BDS30 is a best choice. Complete repair of the perineum as for episiotomy and second degree perineal tear. So I'll repair the mucosa of the anal canal first and the rectum if injured, then repair internal sphincter, then repair external anal sphincter, then you should repair the rest of the tear as in second degree perineal tear like what like vaginal mucosa like perineal muscle like perineal skin as said before complete repair of the perineum ensure that the nodes and the suture ends of bds suture are completely buried with overlying tissue to avoid suture migration. Repair third or fourth degree tear 
should be accurately documented in healthcare records. And this picture show the tears. This is the external anal sphincter, and this is the internal anal sphincter, and this is the rectal mucosa. Okay, this is the external, and this is the internal anal sphincter. And in the other picture also, this is a complete perineal tear as you see in this picture and how to repair this picture to show you the end to end or overlapping techniques this is the end to end and this is the overlapping technique okay What is the post-operative cure? Provide adequate post-operative analgesia as prescribed to include paracetamol 1 gram up to 4 times per day, profin 400 milligram up to 3 times a day, oramorph 10 to 20 milligram up to 3 times a day, intravenous antibiotic like second generation phallosporin or Third generation phallosporin together with metronidazole should be given and continued orally for one week. So start by intravenous in the day of operation and the day after, then continue by oral till one week. All women should be prescribed stool softener like lactulose 15 milli twice a day for 10 days because hard stool may disrupt the repair so I wanted to soften this tool to prevent straining and hard stool from causing disruption of the repair all women should be provided with antibacterial soap or antiseptic wash to reduce the risk of infection women should be advised about the importance of perineal hygiene including changing their sanitary towels regularly and how to note any signs of infection developing and should be managed carefully. Pelvic floor physiotherapy should be advised to all women for the purpose of strengthening of the pelvic floor musculature. Follow-up examination three months postpartum. This follow-up examination should at least include the following items history of symptoms of anal incontinence like flatus incontinence defecatory urgency incontinence for liquid stool incontinence for solid stool then respect the perineum for the healing of the wound then do vaginal and rectal palpation to be sure that everything is fine, the vagina is okay, and the, the rectum is okay, and there is no problems or fistula. And the tone of the sphincter is very well. Refer to physiotherapy. What about the management of sub sub subsequent pregnancy? And the delivery all women at, according to guidelines recently up to 2019 all women with previous history of anal sphincter injury third or fourth tears should be referred to perineal assessment clinic between 28 to 34 weeks gestational age for individual assessment and discussion about the mode of delivery so we will send the patient for assessment at perineal assessment clinic at gestation age 24 to 34 weeks, 28 to 34 weeks. The risk of recurrence of third and the fourth degree tears is 7%. You should know that and the patient should know that. The initial risk at first vaginal delivery is 5% so 
the patient if she tried vaginal delivery she has a risk of seven percent of occurrence of third and fourth degree tear all women will be assessed individually as to their clinical need for endoanal ultrasound and manometry at the perineal assessment clinic so ultrasound endoanal ultrasound and manometry is very important during the perineal assessment clinic in general continent women who have no evidence of significant anal sphincter compromise will be suitable for hospital vaginal delivery under supervision Women with mild anal incontinence with evidence of anal sphincter compromise would be counseled and offered that the, the best method for delivery is caesarean section, elective caesarean section. Women with significant fecal incontinence need to be counseled about secondary anal sphincter repair. There is no evidence that prophylactic episiotomy prevent prevents rec recurrence of sphincter tear and therefore an episiotomy should only be performed when indicated like in occipital to posterior position in large sized baby in shoulder dystocia in fibrotic band or in elastic perineum would be done what are the complications of repair of obstetric trauma perineal and the genital trauma pain, hemorrhage, missed the third or fourth tear, wound site edema or infection, rectal mucosal injury, anal incontinence, urethral injury, hematoma formation, wound dehiscence. This is the early complications. Okay? So I have early and delayed. This is the early. What about delayed? Delayed may be chronic pain, chronic infections, pelvic organ prolapse, sexual dysfunction, anorectal dysfunction, and direct to vaginal fistula. And that's why we, we should do post-operative care, immediate post-operative care, and after three months, follow up for the patient for detecting any complication, specifically in third and fourth degree perineal tear, with hazards of rectovaginal fistula or anal incontinence. This is the last slide. I hope this lecture was clear. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoor University. Thank you.